While Beethoven's early quartets push the limits within an already existing structure, and the middle quartets completely open us to new extremes of sonic and emotional experience, Beethoven's late quartets are constructed in a way which makes us feel as if we are looking straight into Beethoven's mind and soul. As an artist, Beethoven is pushing the boundaries of form to the brink of collapse, and at the heart of it all, he is challenging and then working out for himself the relationship of music as a language and its capacity for expression. The first movement of Opus 130 starts out simply enough with a slow introduction that leads to a faster main body, nothing revelatory at this point. However, the slow material keeps returning, not just once, but again within the exposition, again to begin the development, and then alternating back and forth, and then yet again alternating back and forth before the coda. Usually, when there is a slow introduction to a fast movement, a memory of this may appear at a later point in the movement, but the primacy of the faster material is never in question. Here, in the opening movement of 130, the repeated return of the slow material raises the question, what is the primary material for the movement? Is it the great sense of opening a world with an unfolding question? Or is it the hopeful promise of an answer? second. Was that an answer? Doesn't a dominant usually fall to a tonic? We now find ourselves sitting smack dab in the middle of Beethoven's mind, where he is working out questions right before our very eyes. The next four movements take Beethoven completely out of his usual norms as far as inner movements go, and perhaps we find ourselves in a land of four short character pieces. The first of these is a presto, which feels as though we are in the mind of an eagle, skimming the surface of shimmering water, elegant and effortless on the surface, but with an alive and heightened awareness at all times. This balance explodes with the romp of the trio. Before the primary presto material returns, Beethoven brings in an existential threat to the very existence of the characters of the movement. But luckily, after three attempts, we find our way back into flying right where the air is smooth and the views are spectacular. The next movement, titled Poco Scherzando, or slightly joking, is like the most intricate of puzzles where many pieces may look almost identical, but if put in the wrong place, the entire construct will completely tumble. Beethoven juxtaposes tender melodic material with mechanical sounding material to beg the question, is this movement the most gorgeous bit of music we've ever heard, or is this a witty caricature? The fourth movement, titled Alla Danza Tedesca, or Like a German Dance, is a complete parody of a waltz, bordering dangerously close to being grotesque. Unbalanced and exaggerated swells and sudden dynamic shifts can almost make us queasy, but perhaps this is musical form making fun of itself. Beethoven is playing games with us and the very idea of form throughout the movement. But one particularly fun game is when he fragments and splits the melody into single bar units and then puts them completely out of order. The original order of the first eight bars becomes eight, seven, six, five, one, two, three, four. The 
The Cavatina is the fifth movement of Opus 130. If Beethoven has been generally searching through form, language, parody, and caricature in the previous movements, the Cavatina is where Beethoven searches for universal truth. A Cavatina was originally a kind of operatic aria, and for most of the movement, the idea of melody, particularly between the two violins, is very apparent. It is when the second violin sings in the simplest of ways, showing purity of thought. But then the first violin cannot find the same honest simplicity and answers in the most embellished of ways. That all constructs as we know them are shattered and the most basic primordial elements are exposed. emerge with a harmonic pulsation. And the first violin, marked a clamped or choked in anguish, is left completely fragmented, unable to even speak coherently in a movement which is supposed to have sung. that our world has gone through an earth-shattering transformation, how can we continue? There are two possible outcomes for Opus 130. Originally, Beethoven wrote the Great Fugue, or the Grossa Fuga, as the finale for this piece. This fugue is like an earthquake, where the shattered earth reveals the truest rays of light imaginable in the universe. We are faced head-on with Beethoven working out the crisis of the Cavatina and ultimately coming out victoriously. However, this movement is so extreme and was not well received in Beethoven's time, so he wrote an alternate ending. For the sake of the cycle, we will play the fugue separately as Opus 133, and we will speak further about this movement in a separate video. The alternate six movement retains the harmonic relation that exists between the Cavatina and the Great Fugue, but does not attempt to overcome the great crisis as he has almost always done, particularly from his middle period onwards. He is at peace with letting the Cavatina simply exist and then moves on to yet another clever character piece to finish his collection, which makes up Opus 130. This quartet was part of a set including Opuses 127 and 132, which were commissioned by Prince Gallatin of Russia. Earlier in Beethoven's life, when he was writing string trios, which then set the stage for the quartets, Beethoven was inspired by the six-movement divertimento form that Mozart had so inspiringly used for his great E-flat divertimento. Now at the end of his life, his expansion of form, in a way, returns to that divertimento inspiration of his younger days, and perhaps Beethoven was content with obliging to write an alternate six-movement since he could imagine a divertimento-like movement completing this quartet rather than needing the fugue. Regardless of which ending is chosen for the performance, it is a gift to see through the lens of either. Both give insight into Beethoven's universe.